Hello to our viewers, Lochani Babugeli, Kelly Dumedisha Baburedi, and welcome to Saga TV with me, your host, Meralda Wahabushiel. Saga TV is an online series created to celebrate 20 years of democratic local government. It is also a lens through which South Africans can view the work of local government and understand its role in South Africa. We look at some of the systematic challenges in the sector and solutions that have been put into place to remedy the hindrances in service delivery. And most importantly, to you and I, as South African citizens, we put a spotlight on the milestones that have been achieved with regards to service delivery and how these milestones have benefited many in the country. With April being Freedom Month, we kick off our first episode of our online series where we look at how municipalities have contributed in building the pillars of freedom for all South African citizens. Our first story looks at the annual celebration of freedom in the city of Johannesburg. As the biggest metropolitan municipality in South Africa, the city of Joburg has kept the plight of freedom alive through its Freedom of the City Awards. The award is for citizens in the city who have contributed to South Africa's struggle for freedom and democracy. The awards also recognize any other person for their exceptional involvement to the betterment of the city of Joburg. Let's have a look. Consignment of freedom of the city is the recognition that is being given to people, stalwarts, uh, activists who contributed to the democracy we are enjoying today. There's a flame uh, burning behind me, which is a symbol of freedom. And the freedom didn't just come, you know, as a miracle. It came because there are people who fought for it. There are people who sacrificed. So the confirmment of the city, it is the recognition of that sacrifice. This is not the first time we bestow uh, such a award to the leaders. We started doing it. Um, we started with Udadu Walter Sisulu. We have also given the freedom of the city to Udadu Mandela, uh, uh, Abu Pool, George Bezos, you know, all our heroes and heroines. We are planning to host it uh, by June this year, and we are awarding this freedom to three of our former leaders, one of them being James Sofason Kempanza, who was an activist, who was a champion for human settlements. And the second one is to our heroine, uh, Umama Urebeka Godane, who has just passed on uh, recently. And Mamu Godane, as a woman, was an activist and he died at 108 years uh, old. Uh, she was one of the organizers of the, of the Clip Down uh, Congress of the People. And uh, she also participated in the Women's March that happened in 1956, which was against stradom and the, and, and, and the apartheid laws during that time. And then the third person is Begim Langeni. And uh, uh, we know that Begim Langeni was killed by the, by the regime through a parcel bomb. And at the age of 35 years, uh, he was still very young. So he was a human rights uh, lawyer. So we are honoring those three people. The city of Johannesburg always strive to improve the lives of the people. We have a plan, and um, it is called GDS 2040. So GDS 2040 is a long-term vision of the city on how to improve socio-economic uh, uh, circumstances of our citizens. And even the IDPs that we are doing today are based on that long-term vision of the GDS 2040. My name is Nongaba Mulwele. I am the speaker of the city of Johannesburg Municipality. You are watching Salga TV.
Let us now take a look at some highlights of some of the work that municipalities are doing looking at how some of the services that are being delivered are contributing to building freedom for citizens in the country. Our first story comes from the Walter Sisulu municipality. The mayor, Bulelwa Kweyia, speaks about road infrastructure upgrades in the municipality. She also explains how the new municipal structure has transformed and how this supports freedom for citizens in the region. Walter Sisulu municipality has, has a lot of bedlocks, but major one is roads. Roads that are damaged, uh, local roads, town roads, that when we have rains in our area, they get deteriorated because we have an old infrastructure. We, with the roads of Alwa North, the resilient which the council budgeted for 11.9 million, we'll know that Alwa North is an N6 route. R58, the entry to the Eastern Cape is coming from Walter Sisulu, which R1 North is part of that. So the resilient road is part of the project that we said as the leadership of the Council of Walter Sisulu, with the community, as I was saying, prioritizing, it's coming from public participation. The roads were full of portals, they were a little bit terrible. Uh, it was difficult for cars to pass each other from opposite directions. We're hopeful now that uh, we see the repairs. Surely, uh, driving will be very good. When we talk about freedom, we talk about the freedom of participation, the freedom of moving, because you cannot move in the bad road. You, your right is being deprived if you have bad roads. To local government, what does the freedom say? Previously, we didn't have the spheres of government. We had only one government that would say a word, but in local government, we have structures. We have the Batupili. We have also the Systems Act. We have structures that are allowing us to have structures of ward committees that are also participating on behalf of the stakeholders and the communities. With the freedom of movement, so it's easier to drive out and visit, and then drive out and go to town. Thank you very much to Salga, and may our colleagues make sure that they put Saiga on the line by being municipalities who are implementing what is expected from them, listening to our communities. I am Mulelo Kweyia, uh, the mayor of Walter Sisulu Local Municipality. We are watching Salga TV. We now look at the city of Cape Town Municipality, empowering residents who were previously denied access to property ownership is a key component of the city of Cape Town's commitment to bringing about redress. On Monday, 16 November 2020, a total of 88 residents of Bontaheville and Bishop Levis, as well as surrounding areas, were the happy recipients of the historical title deeds to the city-owned properties they occupy. The handover formed part of the city's commitment to provide 6,000 historical title deeds to beneficiaries by the end of 2020. My name is Malin Matthews and I'm 79 years old. I'm staying now in Harmonyburg, number 20. My title this was very important for me. My life is changing up because I feel I'm an owner now. Freedom Day, it was a promise. But I did promise uh, they have freedom made for us. They did. I'm Grant Twig. I'm the uh, mayoral committee member for urban management within the city of Cape Town. 
we understand that a lot of our communities has called the places where they currently live home for many years, and yet they never had the, the title deed. The documentation of the people received their, their houses 20, 30 years ago. The process of getting the title deeds was very long. Um, so now what we've done within the city, we've got all of that title deeds from the uh, Human Settlements Department, and then we started uh, pulling people together and issuing those title deeds. Freedom in the context of local government has a responsibility with its community to plan the future. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very thankful for God and for the counselor, for everyone who was in part in my life for this house. One way that freedom relates to communities and municipalities is how they're able to provide the community with a dignified environment to live and work in. Another right that was previously denied. The Buffalo City Municipality has been hard at work improving the Kumza Highway. It's these constant improvements that will help us unlock a lot of socio-economic possibilities. There is also an exciting water park upgrade project underway. Let's have a look. Freedom means that our people in the city should have access, which in many instances in the past it did not have in terms of the leisure facilities. Before 1994, our people were not allowed to use certain beaches by virtue of the Separate Amenities Act that was uh, existing at the time. But much more progress has been made, but we are left with the legacy of underdevelopment, which we have to undertake as the city. We have de defined our, our development trajectory to take into account a new approach in terms of development that is defined by the Metro Growth and Development Strategy. And we then subsequently agreed that we will assign uh, the Buffalo City Metro Development Agency to undertake a task of developing the West Bank area. Central to that was the water park, but we also want to build a, a hotel in the area as part of uh, our approach to infrastructure development, but to increase our capacity in terms of uh, tourism, tourism and leisure. Speed towns, signage, and just clearing up around the site. So that first section is fully complete, it's drivable. We have completed the fourth phase of the Kumza Highway upgrade, which starts from NU6 to NU12. We are now left with the fifth phase from the NU12 to NU13 so that we can complete the project. So we're quite grateful that uh, we have arrived at this point in terms of our infrastructure rollout and the upgrade of the Tanzania uh, Township. Not only the Kumza Highway, but also uh, the, the internal roads and ensure that we improve, one, mobility, secondly, access to transport facilities so that our people can move freely. The potholes, lot of potholes, basically, but the, the changes, a lot of change in Koyong. Before traffic One, two, three.
My name is Kola Pagadi. I'm the mayor of Buffalo City Metropolitan Municipality, and you are watching Salka TV. We now have MEC Park Stau on the line to speak to us about the 20-year local government journey and what can be achieved through deliberate and collective action to improve people's lives. A very warm welcome to Salga TV, MEC Dao. Hello, thank you very much. Local government has rewritten the history of racial inequality and exclusion, and it's gone on to create a new dawn of democracy and development with shared hope and vision for our country. What are some of your reflections on this journey? And are there any pivotal points that you'd like to highlight to us and our viewers? Local government is at the call phase of development and delivery in our communities. Through local government, we have seen uh, the deployment of services at different levels in our communities. Some of, the, some of these are basic services that we sometimes take for granted, such as water and sanitation, such as electricity, local roads, and so on. Um, and in many ways, municipalities have been at the forefront of delivering these. Um, including, of course, being the conduit through which most of the housing delivery projects are undertaken throughout the country. Now, one of the things that are important to consider when you think local government is the fact that it has the ability to also raise its own revenue and therefore the ability to contribute towards the delivery program uh, through its own revenue. I mean, I make a highlight about how we had gotten to a point in the city of Johannesburg of investing the highest per capita uh, capital budget and infrastructure budget in the country of all of subnational governments. And this was done through, amongst others, uh, getting grants from national government, which constituted a third of the capital budget of the city. The other one third of the budget was on the basis of the surpluses generated from own revenue of the municipality. And the other third would be loans that are raised by the municipality to finance infrastructure. So in many ways, it gives local government the opportunity through different sources of funding to accelerate service delivery. How do we deliver on the promises of this freedom when we're distracted by problems in service delivery, financial management, and corruption? How do you think local government can be made to be more accountable so that our people can continue to believe in what freedom actually means? Firstly, I think it is important to acknowledge that these are uh, social economic rights for South Africans. So all South Africans have a right to access water, electricity, sanitation services, waste removal services, and other basic social economic rights. However, the constitution also indicates that it is about the progressive realization of these rights, acknowledging that we come from a history of uh, significant neglect and lack of access to these basic services, and that extensive resources need to be deployed in ensuring access to these services. So we have to acknowledge when we say progressive realization that it will take time. It is not as if government has all the money at its disposal to be able to resolve all the problems. Uh, at one go. So we need to also acknowledge the significant progress that has been made in the delivery of these services, uh, but also acknowledge the enormity of the challenge that still remains that requires that we find innovative ways of financing infrastructure investment and of developing infrastructure in such a manner that we are able to accelerate the way in which we deliver these services. So looking at alternative technologies, looking at decentralized systems of implementation, whether it's in relation to, to wastewater management or whether it's in relation to electricity, there are modular technologies that you can deploy that enable you to accelerate the delivery of these services. And I think we should now have greater appetite to implement these modular solutions in our communities. Of course, as we have observed in the country over time, there have been issues of probity in certain instances as we implement these programs. And it is important that we address the issues of uh, probity, address the issues of the efficiency of government spend and reduce 
uh, significantly, if not to zero, the levels of uh, uh, unauthorized expenditure uh, and fruitless expenditure that are experienced in municipalities. I do think that by improving governance, by improving our oversight mechanisms, by improving the way in which we hold each other to account, we should be able to address the issues of probity in our councils and through that ensure the efficiency of spend and improve delivery of services. Now, MEC, the latest stats essay, non-financial census on municipalities report, shows that local government has made meaningful progress in the delivery of basic services to the most vulnerable communities. What then should the sector as a whole do to nurture the progress that has been made and really elevate service delivery? I think, firstly, I think it's important that the sector, particularly through Salga and other organizations, should highlight to communities the significant progress that has been made to take the stats as a report and uh, give that to the public and ensure that people have a greater appreciation of the work that's done by municipalities. You know, in many ways, I always say that we experience local government from the time we wake up, uh, whether you switch on the light, whether you uh, use, use the bathroom, uh, whether you get into the street to go to work or to places of uh, amusement or any other thing, the reality is almost immediately when you wake up, you experience your local government. And it is those things that you take for granted. It's almost like, but it's a given, water is supposed to flow through the tap. The reality is that it is because of the work that's done by municipalities that this is able to happen. So we shouldn't always take it as a given, uh, but acknowledge that in fact, through the work of our local governments, we are witnessing significant improvement in the services that are being delivered. Now, local government has made inroads in improving the conditions and quality of sanitation within informal settlements. However, population growth and in-migration, especially to your metropolitan areas, creates a unique challenge in how local government delivers services to unproclaimed informal settlements. This then means that local government is in actual fact chasing a moving target. What can local government do to solve the challenges experienced in informal settlements? Well, firstly, I think, as you are saying, it is always a moving target. It's not as if you can deliver and it's done. It's a question of continuously delivering uh, and acc accommodating the reality that people would continue to flock into the urban centers in search of opportunity. And it is important that we now, as I said earlier, look at alternative technologies to address service delivery. So we can have modular uh, decentralized sanitation systems that can be provided in in uh, informal settlements. And this you can uproot uh, if the settlement is relocated and take it to a different settlement or use it as part of the development of new settlements. So it is those technologies that we must have greater appetite to implement. We did this, for example, in the city of Johannesburg in relation to electricity in Tembelehi, where we acknowledge that the settlement is informal, that it will be relocated, however, the service of electricity is needed, and there is extensive illegal utilization of uh, electricity that affects the surrounding communities. By introducing a decentralized system where people are able to access electricity from a solar system that has batteries that are articulated into communities, you introduce a local community-based grid for electricity distribution. So it is about having greater appetite to look at these technologies and deploy them and therefore improve the quality of services that people deliver and also ensure that uh, we don't always look at the poor and say they are doing an illegal this or an illegal that, illegal access to electricity, when in fact we can legalize their access to electricity through alternative technology deployment. When we say um, illegal trade, when in fact we can enable them to function more effectively in commercial spaces that acknowledge the informality, however, accepts that in fact we can legalize the activities of the poor through the way in which we administer 
our municipal systems. That's all we have time for today, MEC. Thank you so much for having that insightful discussion with us. That was MEC Park Stau on a call with us discussing the role of local government in bringing to reality some of the values of freedom through local municipalities' service delivery. This wraps up our first edition of Saga TV. It has been a good opportunity to be able to see the milestones of what local government has done for its people in realizing their democratic rights as people of South Africa. We only had time for a few highlights, but we hope to bring you a good scope of all the work that has been taking place in all our nine provinces, looking at what we have achieved since the advent of democracy. Next month's episode will have a special focus on Workers' Month and the role of local government in upholding workers' rights. Thank you for watching. That's it from my side. Until next time, Nisa Lega Mnanj.